Welcome to the studio. I have with me Ronald van der Breggen. You're the uh, newly appointed, I should say, uh, special advisor to a satellite company called Kebney that we're going to talk more about really, really soon. But first, uh, I want to know a bit more about your background. Mm -hmm. How do one become a satellite expert? Um, I think it starts with taking an interest in technology. It takes uh, an interest in uh, using technology to bring people together. That, that at least that's how it worked for me. I worked for a telecom operator for a long time. This was in the middle of the time when the internet sort of broke through. So I found myself in interesting discussions between people on the one hand that said this is never going to fly because there's no money to be made and the others are saying it's, it's going to be the next best thing. Mm -hmm. Something not too dissimilar from what's going on right now in, in satellite, but more about that later. And then in uh, 2003, I joined a company that ultimately became part of the biggest satellite company um, uh, on Earth, uh, which is uh, SES. And um, having the global role that I had, I had the opportunity to travel the world, meet with customers and had staff across the globe. And then you get a good feel for um, you know, what, what drives people towards uh, satellites and what the applications are that they need it for and, and all that which was great when I started to work for a company called LeoSat. And that is a company that was planning on launching low Earth orbit satellites. And um, we had the opportunity to um, work with lots of customers. My responsibility was to, to bring in customer contracts and find out that uh, this actually resonated really, really well with them. Mm -hmm. And um, in doing so, we had a fantastic portfolio of business um, unfortunately, the company did not succeed. We ran out of money before we, we launched, which was a, a, you know, a very bitter pill to swallow, but it, it gave me a lot of experience that now helps me uh, help companies like Kepney and, 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 uh, and, and others to develop strategies in this changing world of satellite that makes sense and anticipate on what's, what's around the corner. And I think there's a lot of things around the corner. You, you mentioned low Earth orbit, and yeah. you're saying that it's a changing world, this world of satellites. Definitely, I feel like yeah. we need to dissect what's what, because I have, a, I think, a general idea of what a satellite is, but uh, not at all common with a sure. low Earth. So orbit. it started out with GEOs, that's a geostationary Earth orbit, and um, those are the satellites most of us know because you put a dish on the side of your house and you center it around a uh, satellite and it's fixed forever, hence geostationary. And these are LEOs that, have, uh, that are closer to Earth, and as a result, they're not fixed anymore, so they, they move. And um, so I think the best way to frame the, 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 the one versus the other is that what, what geos are to television is what LEOs are to computers. There will be people that say, okay, that, that's not entirely true because there's a lot of computers that are connected to geos. Um, but you know, just as you can go on a two-hour mountain hike on flip-flops, it may work, but it's not ideal. So if you have a computer connected to a geostationary system, um, file transfer, video streaming, that might be perfectly okay. But the moment you start doing uh, internet, you, you go internet browsing or start doing transactions, um, things start to slow down significantly because of the distance that that satellite has to Earth. And if you try to, as an enterprise, run a global ERP system on 50 sites using geostationary satellites, then it's time to look for a new job because that's not going to work and you're, you're at risk of being fired if that's what you're, you're planning <laughs> to do. So this is where LEOs come in. So they are much better suited to support data and they bring all the parameters uh, much closer to what we have on um, terrestrial infrastructure and, um, and actually can make it better and, and more secure. So, so that is why uh, things are getting, uh, why things are changing towards LEO because we're living in a data centric world and everything is getting more and more focused around data. So the I can satellite see that. industry I can see that. changes but what, as a result. Uh, what practical applications? Uh, um, the, depends. So we're starting out with the first generation of LEOs now. Those are very close to geostationary satellites in that they are closer to Earth, yes, but they're still what we call bent pipe in the industry. So what mm -hmm. comes up must come down immediately. There's no handoff of traffic to satellites next to it. Mm -hmm. So if you want to have, say, access to the Internet and you use these new LEOs, you go up and then you go down to what we call a gateway from where all the traffic that you're putting in is being put to either the internet or a VPN or a cloud or corporate network, whatever. 
Um, and so what you'll see is that is going to be used as an access network, access to the internet or, or what have you. It's more price sensitive, but as the next generations will come, as we see everywhere, uh, also in, in mobile networking where we're now at 5G, mm -hmm. the later generations of LEO, that will be a full-fledged you know, series of satellites completely uh, engulfing Earth. Every satellite is interconnected. A data protocol is running on top of that so that when you shoot data in, it can travel the constellation. It doesn't and necessarily have to come down once it goes up. No, no, no. You, uh, it stays point. in. It's, it, of course, it, at some point you need to terminate that circuit, but it, it only co comes down where it needs to come down, mm -hmm. and it stays in the constellation as a result. And now you have a network which is better than a terrestrial network. It is faster because of the speed of light, and that's you know uh, another discussion. Mm -hmm. um, and it's more secure because you don't travel all the... Earth cables with the you know the potential risk of people pulling cables or listening in, and so this is not so price sensitive. The years people are fully prepared to pay a premium for this, and um, uh, it will allow uh, mission critical applications to be run on there, be it for military or for enterprise or for you know all, all sorts of. I feel like we're we're companies. approaching my my territory, the one that I like numbers. Uh, can you uh, give me? Um it's something, give me something about market size. What number can you give me? I can give you the number of two billion. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's the total amount of contracts we were able to uh, amass when I was with Leosat. We did it with a team of three people. Mm -hmm. We did it pre-launch. And so um, that is quite an achievement in itself, if I may say so. Um, and, and still today in the industry, that is, that is a very high number. Um, and, and so this is a real number. I mean, this is not reading thick research reports with people making lots of phone calls asking mm -hmm. where people are going to spend their money. This was in the period 2015 to 2019. So that's not too long ago. Mm -hmm. So that makes for a really good business case. Mm -hmm. um, but if you take the business case to investors and, and they're quite comfortable with that and happy with that and you tell them it's going to be costing four money, which is also okay, then when you start to explain it, it's going to be taking 12 years before they get their money back because that is the period in which, you know, which it takes to, to build such a constellation and before you see revenues, that's when they start balking because that's a very long time. Yeah. Now, if you add on top of that saying, you know, but we're going to make the, the world a better place and we're going to give equal access to the internet to everybody, we're going to connect the unconnected, then it's not so much a problem anymore. You do get the money, although it's from different sources, but now you have a business model that, is, uh, uh, that needs to close based on people that do not have so much money to spend. So that's when some of the Leo companies are getting in trouble. And you know, if you read the news, you, you, see, you see some of that happening today. Mm. Um, another angle here worth considering is, uh, take for instance Amazon, a company that throws off uh, a billion dollars in revenue every single working day. Mm -hmm. So arguably, you know, they could take a week's revenue and build an entire constellation. And, and once they have that up and running and have access to literally everybody in the world, um, even if, if having that access to those people, or rather these people having access to Amazon and, and the web shop, even if that moves the needle of their revenues like three or 4%, they'll make their money back on that constellation in a matter of months, maybe even weeks. Mm. So whether you have a fantastic business case and make money, whether it's not so great and you may be making a loss, or maybe in the case of Amazon, you may not even be asking for money at all because it's just a means to an end, it's gonna get done, that's one thing. And secondly, it's, it's also very fashionable in this industry to kind of lean back and, and wait and see the, the, the losers and the, and the winners be shaken out. But I think that's a very risky strategy for everybody in this whole value chain. Because if you do so, I think you are going to be one of the folks that is going to be shaken out as a loser because this is happening, as you said, this is happening today. And money is being spent on building these constellations today. So for every company, I would recommend if you're in this value chain, you really got to make up your mind who you want to be and what you want to be in this next wave of you know, satellites that is now, You've been in, involved in this, and mm -hmm. you mentioned that you were involved globally, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of different co contracts. Mm -hmm. uh, what geographical region would you say is ahead? So traditionally, everything satellite is always very US centric. So that's mm -hmm. definitely an area to watch. There's a lot of satellite companies there. There's a lot of thought leadership there. Um, that being said, there is a fantastic industry in, in Europe. I mean, the first non-geostationary satellites were actually built in Europe um, for communications. China is coming up. They are spending tons of money, as one would expect from China. 
but you know, an area to highlight, I think, is, is Scandinavia. Scandinavia has a rich tradition of quality, has always been involved in uh, technology and communication, you know, Nokia, Ericsson. But now with LEOs, where all these satellites are in, in what we call polar orbits, all these satellites congregate at the North Pole and at the South Pole, for that matter. So what you'll see is that these operators of these new LEO satellites they will try to get a foothold in this part of the world simply because it is so high north. And from here, you can see the most satellites uh, relative to any other point on Earth simply because you are that high north. So mm. I think for Scandinavia, there's a wonderful opportunity to, um, to benefit from, from this new development in satellite, which was completely agnostic as to location uh, earlier with GEOS, but now with LEOS is really going to be concentrating uh, here, uh, or you know, potentially also in the deep south, but you know, I think here there's a lot more to uh, to go after for these companies. I see. Now let's dive into Kebnes. What's what's their piece of this puzzle? So Kebney is a company that makes antennas, and um, as these new Leo satellites are getting closer to Earth, um, they're going to be watching. They're going to be seeing. That's a better word. Less and less of Earth, simply as a function of getting closer. But yet, all remember we talked about up and down. So, so you'll see uh, many more of these these gateways where people need to be connecting into to hand off that traffic to the internet and what have you. So, as a function of Leo, you'll see a lot more antennas being required and a lot more of these gateways being built. So that's already good news for for Kepney. And in addition to that, the company having such huge experience with basically anything that moves, be it you know, you're moving yourself when you're on the ground or you're looking at something that is moving up in space, um, in terms of hardware and software and, and, and maintenance and experience, there's just a, a ton of knowledge there. And I think this is where Kepney can really make a difference. And, and what about competition? Competition is mainly focusing on what I would call the end user antenna. So it's about small and cheap. Mm -hmm. And I think Kepney is more in the category of building the the gateway antennas and so as I think that uh, competition wise you'll see many companies focus on this end user antenna Kepney can carve out a nice niche for themselves more focusing on the hubs and the gateways than uh, you know on, on the end user uh, antennas which is more about you know critical mass and, and lower margins um, which I don't think is, is uh, ideal for Kepney because they have a much better story uh, for gateways where uh, they bring a lot of knowledge. Ronald, let's, uh, let's respect uh, the pandemic and avoid shaking hands, but <laughs> thank you so much for coming here. It was uh, super interesting. Thank you. Thank you.